हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट एट के ग्रुप ऑफ इंस्टीट्यूशंस सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द यागी उडा एंटेना इन आर एंटेना डिजाइन द सिमुलेशन कोर्स आई होप यू ऑल हैव सीन द प्रीवियस वीडियोज इन विच आई हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक्ड अबाउट अ लॉट ऑफ एंटेनाज एंड द डाउनलोड एंड द इंस्टॉलेशन ऑफ द तरंग सॉफ्टवेयर इफ नॉट इट इज हाईली रिकमेंडेड दैट यू गो बैक एंड वॉच द प्रीवियस वीडियोज वंस एंड देन कम टू दिस वीडियो बिकॉज without knowing about the designing of the previous videos and about the dipole and the folded dipole antenna it is very difficult for you to understand the yagi uda antenna right so we are going to start with the simulation of the yagi uda antenna i have a pre made design of the yagi uda antenna first of all i am going to show you that then we are going to make our own design of the yagi uda antenna and then we are going to see its theory part right so first of all we are opening an a pre made design so we have to go to the file open file option and here we have this pre made design the yagi uda dot png so now when i clicked it this design has opened so this is my reflector if i double click it so you can see the various things associated with it like its diameter is 0.127 its length is 6.35 cm okay so it is placed 3.048 cm apart from the driven element now coming to the driven element this is my driven element having the length 6.1 cm which is placed at the 0.0x and 0y point and the diameter is again 0.127 right these are my four directors so director is having the length 2.064 and it is having the distance 4.064 cm away from the driven element so now we have to give the port excitation you know the uh, driven element is my dipole antenna so we when we make the dipole antenna we are supplying the port excitation at the center so now i have taken the port excitation i am going to place it at the x0 y0 and the z0 okay the characteristic impedance would be 50 only now i am going to simulate it okay so i have the frequencies right so the start starting frequency is 1.5 gigahertz the ending frequency stop frequency is 3 gigahertz we are discussing it on 101 points and the center frequency is 2.4 gigahertz now we are going to simulate it and then we are going to observe all of the results associated with it so the simulation is taking somewhat more time because here we have uh, some more elements we have a array so this is the array of like six elements right so the simulation part will be taking some time now the simulation is done and now we are seeing the radiation pattern so this is how we will be having the unidirectional radiation pattern so what i wanted to convey from here see we had the dipole antenna we had the folded dipole antenna now why we move towards the yagi uda antenna when we observed the radiation pattern of the dipole and the folded dipole antenna the radiation pattern were bidirectional in nature on the other hand the yagi uda has unidirectional radiation pattern right so the radiation pattern is having the maximum only in the one direction so this is how we have the maximum radiation over this part so when i have the receiver in the particular direction i don't want to send the signal in the back direction so for that i will be using a unidirectional antenna like the yagi uda antenna and the log log periodic antenna both of them are the are the kind of arrays that we have okay so there are some basic differences between the yagi uda and the log periodic antenna that is also we are going to discuss in this lecture so this is the radiation of the yagi uda antenna okay now coming to the impedance this is the real part of the impedance right then we have the imaginary part of the impedance this is the imaginary part of the impedance then we have the magnitude okay so then we have the phase plot this is my phase plot okay so you can see the sharp change okay so now from here we can calculate the s parameters as well okay so 
you can see all of the characteristics associated with it right so we have seen all of the characteristics almost all of the characteristics this is my feed power and after that we have the smith chart so you can see the smith chart as well i am magnifying it so this is how our smith chart would be looking like and after that we have the 2d radiations so this is how my 2d radiations will be looking like 3d radiations we have already seen so now coming to the so this is my charge distribution okay this is how my charges will be distributed on all of the elements right and this is the same element the dipole antenna at the one end i will be having the maximum charge at the one end i will be having the minimum charge all of the other elements are the passive elements okay then we can see the current distribution so you can see the current distribution the current is maximum at the center of the dipole antenna that we know okay we all know actually all of the properties associated with the dipole antenna we are very familiar with it so now this is my voltage distribution voltage is maximum at one end and it is minimum at the one end of the dipole antenna okay so this is my radiation plot 2d radiation plot okay so now after that i can observe the near field and the far field as well so here i can go to this option from this option i can set some locations like minus 200 to 200 with the points 51 and here i can take it to be minus 7 to 7 and the points 4 again minus 200 to 200 and the points to be 51 okay so i have made it so you can see what kind of box that is created and for this box i am going to see the field so in this region only i am going to see the field okay so for seeing the near field i am going to click on this near field option so you can see the near field over here okay so this is my near field right so now i can actually play with it okay so this is how i can have the animation so you can see the animations over here so these this is how our field would be looking like field contour and let us view it as well okay so you can see the field contour as well and we can play it right so you can see so this is my field contour that i have okay so i have told you all of the parameters for the pre made antenna now coming to the new antenna so i am going to file i am going to new so this is giving me a new window okay so again i am starting first of all i am taking the driven element the length of the driven element is 7.28 cm okay so i am going to make the length from minus 7.28 divided by 2 to 7.28 divided by 2 okay now i am taking the diameter to be 0.1 and this is my element 1 okay so you can see this is my driven element okay now i am going to place the reflector and then we are going to see the radiations when i just have the driven element and the reflector so now this is my reflector the length of the reflector would be 7.49 so i am going to take it from minus 7.49 divided by 2 to 7.49 divided by 2 and i am going to place it at the position minus 3 Point seven five centimeter. Okay, so here also I am pasting the same thing. So now the diameter would be zero point one again, and here comes my reflector. 
so now I have pressed the R button because the lens are very small the diameter are very small if you don't press the R button you won't be able to see it very clearly okay so these are my reflector and the driven element now I am going to give the port excitation here so I am going to give it so now here you can see that I am giving 0 0 0 uh, location to the port and characteristic impedance is 50 itself so now I am going to run it first of all I have to simulate it so now the starting frequency is 1 E9 okay so the ending stop frequency or the ending frequency is 3 E9 and the center frequency is 1.8 E9 9 okay so now i am going to simulate it so we are going to see its radiation pattern first so this is how i will be having the unidirectional radiation pattern if i am just placing the reflector so if i press w so you can see this is how i have the reflector and uh, actually the driven element and the radiations are going in the one direction only right so this is my minor lobe this is the back lobe actually and also the minor lobe that we have so this design will be having some minor lobes which contains the unwanted radiations or the unwanted power waste that we have now let's put now let's put the director over here so when i take one more wire now I, again i am placing the director at the same distance 3 point but it is in the positive direction so 3.75 direction actually i have taken it to be the distance lambda by 4 so here i have three wires the third wire is placed at the 3.75 3.75 minus 7.01 upon 2 7.01 upon 2 and the diameter is 0 0.1 now we are going to simulate this structure and we have taken the same start and the stop frequency and the same center frequency so go to the simulate option and then we are going to observe the radiation so you can see this is how i will be getting my radiation if i click w and here you can see the three wires as well one is director one is driven element and one is reflector so now i can see the 2d plot as well so go to the polar plot and right click and this is how we will be getting the unidirectional radiation pattern okay so this is actually not a just single uh, antenna it is just an array of three antennas you can see we are having three antennas over here so it is called an array of antennas but in this array we just have one driven element so only one element is excited other two elements are the parasitic elements right so one is active element which is the driven element the reflector and the director are the parasitic element which are getting its energy from the driven element right so we will be getting all of the same characteristics we are just seeing the near fields again so i am taking it to be minus 200 okay so i have made this uh, a region so this is the field region in which i am going to observe the near field so this is the near field option that i have clicked and let's see how we will be getting the near field so let's zoom it let's observe it so this is the near field that i have got right so now i can animate it so go to the play option by right clicking and this is how it is going to animate you are going to see the radiation patterns over here you can see if you go close to the yagyu antenna the radiation patterns are going to look like this right so this is my flux lines you can see the gain has increased right so whenever i am using the reflector director the gain will be increased too much so this is a very good property that we have so 
again the flux lines are calculating it will be taking some time because it is an array so to calculate the flux lines there are some calculation or computations that are going on for 101 points and this is the reason it is taking some time okay so you can see the field lines or the flux lines over here right so this is how our flux lines would be looking like so you can easily design now your yagi uda antenna so now coming to the theory part okay so we are at the yagi uda antenna we have already designed a yagi uda antenna this is the characteristics of my six element yagi uda antenna which was pre designed okay so it was operating at the 2.4 gigahertz frequency the frequency sweep was 1.4 and 1.5 to 3 gigahertz with 101 points the lambda was 125 mm L1 was 0.34 lambda that is 42 mm, L2 was 35 mm, L3 was 35 mm, it is equal to 0.28 lambda, L4 was actually L3 is the reflector, okay, so L2 is the driver to director, L1 is director spacing, okay, L4 would be director length which is 41 mm which is 0.33 lambda, L5 is the driver length which is 60 mm which is 0.48 lambda l6 is reflector length which is 64 mm which is 0.51 lambda okay so l7 is the antenna length that is dipole antenna driven element length which is 200 mm 1.6 lambda expected gain was 1.6 lambda which was nearly equal to 6.2 db so this is how we got all of the radiation patterns so what is yagi uda antenna so now coming to the theory part okay so here we have the reflector we have the driven element and we have the director this is the direction of the maximum radiation so if i take the right length if i take the right spacing relative to the dipole antenna conductive element will tend to reflect the electromagnetic waves back into the direction of the dipole so as to get the uni unidirectional radiation and this element which is reflecting the radiation in the one direction is called the reflector okay so we have one element which is called the uh, director which is directing the em waves away from the direction of the dipole okay so it is giving the shape to the uh, em waves which the driven element is sending so when i have the normal lights and when i have the laser lights the laser lights are traveling the long distance it can go and reach up to longer distances as well why because it is more directional so director is making my radiations or em waves into more directional nature the reflector and the director both are known as the parasitic element because they are not connected to the feed lines only the driven element is connected to the feed line this is my driven element these are my four directors and this is my reflector so this is my yagi uda array configuration so it is uh, invented by hidden sugu yagi and shintaro uda so this is why it is called as yagi uda antenna but simply it is called the yagi antenna as a more commonly used name so it is made of three elements as of all director driven element and the reflector so there is a object that support all of these things which is called the boom okay so director is typically five per percent shorter than the driven element and is placed 0.2 lambda in the front of it whereas the reflector is typically five percent longer than the driven element and it is placed 0.2 lambda behind it we can take the uh, that spacing to be ranging from 0.2 lambda to 0.5 lambda as well okay in between these uh, range i can take the spacing and the height would be 5% shorter for the director and 5% longer for the reflector so now when i am having the optimized design so optimized design will be having the perfect uh, spacing the perfect length of the director reflector and all so it will be giving me the uh, smallest size the best gain the uh, front to back ratio or the bandwidth okay so if i have the longer boom it results in the more behaved designs right so the presence of conductors if 
the conductors are so close will affect the feed point impedance so now at that point we have to play with the feed point impedance as well so there are various schemes which are used to match the antenna to the transmission line which is called the gamma match okay so gamma match is the most commonly used matching scheme which is used to match the feed point to the transmission line so the total array length would be 0.8 lambda if i take the spacing between the directors to be 0.2 lambda the reflector spacing to be 0.2 lambda okay so the actual element length would be l3 is equal to l5 would be 0.447 lambda l4 would be 0.443 lambda l1 is equal to 0.490 lambda so now coming to the log periodic antenna log periodic antenna is actually a array of the dipolar antenna so you can see over here we have the various dipole antennas of various length and here we have all of the dipole antennas connected to the feed line okay they are zigzag connected to the feed line and this is how we have one more array and it is also sending me the unidirectional pattern because this design is complex we are not talking about its simulation part because it will be taking so long but you should understand the difference between the yagi uda and the log periodic antenna log periodic antenna is shown in this structure and the yagi uda antenna is shown in this structure log periodic antenna is a wide band antenna whereas yagi uda antenna is a narrow band antenna okay log periodic is working at a high frequency and the very high frequency only but the yagi uda antenna is working at a ultra high frequency so in the log periodic as i told you all of the dipoles are zigzag connected to the feed line whereas in the yagi uda there is no zigzag connection all elements are connected to the feed line in the log periodic whereas only the driven element is connected to the feed line in the yagi uda so we have various uh, elements over here so when i have l is equal to lambda by 2 that is my resistive component okay so here the driven element is my resistive component and when length is less than lambda by 2 these are my capacitive components these two are my capacitive component here director is my capacitive component when l is greater than lambda by 2 it is my inductive component so here reflector is my inductive component so i hope you understood the yagi uda antenna in detail so if you have any further query you can put the query in the comment and i will be trying to resolve your query as soon as possible i hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel and join me in the next session very soon thank you so much